Let's see what our Act 1 looks like here. I'm currently starting at zero wins on this silent. Meaning we can be a little bit reckless with our choices if we want to. But the goal here is to build consistency, learn the ins and outs of the silent class, and sort of achieve true mastery. That is the true goal here. Hmm. Fighting Hexaghost at the end of the act. This actually might be take damage for a random rare relic. Looking at our paths here, I see... Not a lot of reasonable ways to fight elites. This one's okay, as far as paths go. But I don't see a way to fight uh, three or more elites that doesn't involve being suicidally dangerous with the early elite fights. So I think it'd be really hard to get more than two. But we can view taking the starting bonus of lose some health, gain a rare relic, as, as that's kind of like fighting an extra elite with a guaranteed outcome uh, and helps us get a leg up on all the other fights too. Rare relics can also really shape your run and help you build your uh, your deck. There's quite a few that are very good for silent. Uh, gambling Chip, Incense Burner, Fossilize Helix, Tingsha, Tough Bandages all come to mind. Have you mustered? Personally dealing with a shell shock of knowing that I actually lose runs. It's true. Although we do win more often than we lose, which I'm very proud of. But yeah, this game is obscenely hard, so losses always happen. Yeah, less damage than we take from sentries, arguably. Sure, definitely. Other options are choose a card, three random potions, or the boss swap, and I don't really like any of those. I didn't mention Dead Branch, but it is pretty good. We get Ice Cream, allowing us to conserve energy between turns. Is Ice Cream good? As a rare relic, I'm not sure that I would call it that, but it definitely means we can be a bit creative with our card picks in some ways. There's some advantages. Starting out as silent, I do think a number of combats is a good idea. I mean, not too many combats. We could do four combats in a row to start. I'm not sure that's wise. Maybe three combats in an event, and then we can choose here. We'll get a fourth combat here, guaranteed. Four or five combats before your first elite does seem pretty correct to me on silence. Hmm. So here, if I'm willing to take one damage, we can save one energy for a future turn. Let's try that. That way I can play four strikes if I draw them. Or, or block and keep damaging, yeah. Cool. Thank you, Ice Cream. And here we don't want to play another card, because we want to keep the energy. Not that we're going to need it, I don't think. I like Predator early on, big damage, and next turn additional draw. It's a bit expensive, but uh, there are ways around that. I think zero cost cards like Deflect are a bit more valuable with the Ice Cream, because if you can't spend all your energy on your turn, you can just spend it more later. How excited is everyone for Spire 2? Personally, very excited. Uh, I was not expecting there to be a Spire 2. At all. And I'm really hopeful that it's going to be quite something. Potions sound great. Do we pay the full 40 gold to look at three here? Maybe. Would be nice to get some decent potions to start. Give us a way to avoid uh, early disaster on silence. Yeah, as Mr. Unique Name says, I, I assumed they'd go on to something else entirely. And it may be that uh, they were toying with other ideas. I mean, they did experiment with... Um, a sort of semi-auto battler in Dancing Duelists, their little Godot project. But it could be that whatever they were trying to design, they just kept thinking, oh, this actually just is, is kind of Spire anyway. So why not just make Spire too? And, and I do have to say, in terms of... When it comes to marketing a, and publishing a game, 
There's absolutely nothing that Mega Crit could announce that would generate more hype than Spire 2. So, um, the, the surest way to get their next project as much attention as possible is to make it Spire 2, for sure. For sure. Noxfrag says, What was Early Access Slay the Spire 1 like in terms of amount of content? So, initial, initial Early Access Slay the Spire, we had Silence and Ironclad. Only two characters. Um, we still had three acts with act bosses. All of the bosses that are in the game, except for the heart, um, were in the game. So we still had Guardian, Hexaghost, Slime Boss, Donudeka, Time Eater, um, Awaken One, Collector, Bronze Automaton, and Camp. Those were all in the game. But there was no act four, no hearts. Um, there was fewer relics of all kinds, although the same number of cards. And there weren't any difficulty levels. You could only play Ascension Zero. So, definitely a lot smaller than Spire is now. They also added more events and some other stuff too. Some of the artwork wasn't finished when Spire initially launched. I'm gonna go with three potions, by the way. Yeah, that's why you take three. Stinky smoke bomb. And I'm very happy to use the speed potion the first time it saves any amount of health. Which we'll probably want to do. That could even be right here, actually. Then I could do neutralize, strike, strike, kill you, speed potion survivor, don't take a hit. Sounds kind of nice. How unbalanced was early Spire? I wouldn't say it was hugely unbalanced. Um, it, it definitely true that some of the boss relics were much better than others. I think Snekawai was really comparatively good in early Spire. Um, some of the boss relics were kind of useless. Orrery was a boss relic, for example. Some of the cards were really strong. Some of the cards were kind of useless. Uh, initial Slay the Spire didn't have... status cards in the same way. Every status card was a wound in the very first uh, version of Slay the Spire. And they only added Dazed, Slime, Void, and Burn afterwards. I don't actually remember what Hexagos did before Burns. Maybe Burns already existed. Wounds and Burns. Was Eternal Feather a boss relic? Yes. Yes, it was. I could also do Survivor Defend Defend and make basically no progress. Now let's do the Speed Potion line. Excuse you. Dang. Hero is hoping to have a clean fight with by using a potion. No such luck, unfortunately. We get a good potion though. Fear potion makes our next elite a lot easier to deal with. What do we think about a slice here? I said zero cost cards are better with the ice cream. Slice is nice with Predator, helps us deal a bit more damage a bit more quickly. I don't totally dislike it. Caltrop's also acceptable here, a damage power that can do significant assistance against Hexaghost. Although less useful against early elites, especially Lagavul and Grumlin Knob. I'll take Slice, I think. I like it with the Predator. And we'll go into our third fight here, which is two lice. Lice is nice. Okay, here's our good fight. Nice, easy fight. Very good, very free. Hmm. Concentrate ice cream is interesting. Because you can generate energy on one turn to use it on another turn. Dagger throw is very useful damage, along with the enabling of discard. And backflip is more card draw. These are all pretty good. 
What would I have to get out of this fight if I wanted to go for the Burning Elites? With these potions, actually, we are almost in a position where we could consider the Burning Elite here. Between the Liquid Memories and the Fear Potion, we can make Predator do a ton of damage. To be really assured of it, I'd want maybe one more really big attack that I could use Liquid Memories on. Like, um, Eviscerate's probably one of the best candidates here. Glass Knife would be okay. All Out Attack would be okay. I like that All Out Attack would solve sentries, too. Normally, I would take Dagger Throw here. I'm wondering if there's maybe room for uh, Ice Cream to be enabling Concentrate in a big way. But it might be too early. go with Dagger Throw. Whoa. Please, please. Yeah, I'm going to go with Dagger Throw, and we're going to skip the shop, because I plan on going to this shop. So we'll take this event. Lose more health, gain a relic. Hmm. I'll play your game. We can rest if we need to, but we can click three or four times at least here. Potentially get something good. First click meal ticket. That's what you like to see. The Crump, thanks for the Prime sub in the three months. I will take your Prime, thank you. And I will upgrade Predator for five more damage, especially with Liquid Memories. Being able to double cast this is very important. And I like knowing that we have a heal coming up here. We can also rest between the fights if we need to. Um, do I want to take a hard pool fight before the Elite, or do I just want to go straight into the Elite? I have the two good potions that I want to use for the Elite, so maybe we should fight the Elite now rather than combat elite. And then we have a relic for whatever this fight is. Let's do that. Hmm. Not what I like to see. Definitely going to block the survivor here, and I think I'll save one energy. Place Slice Strike. Lower the 44 health sentry. For the 40 health sentry, we're going to play Predator and then use Liquid Memories. That'll delete this thing. Hopefully we get that next turn. Hopefully. I can play Defend alongside the Stored Energy for Double Defend. Easy peasy. I'm going to draw a ton of cards next turn. Already got a full amount of energy to spend on it. It's all bank and energy. Seems kind of wasteful. I want to be able to play Predator if I draw it, though, given that we're drawing nine. So let's save one energy here. Or double defense is the other good option. Neutralize you. Two strikes still doesn't kill. I guess we should bring it into two strikes kill range. In case neutralize you. Eight. Dang. Minus five, unfortunately. next turn, though. Okay, we're good. Leaving this fight with 19 health is not too bad. What's our relic? We get Ceramic Fish! Nine gold per card we add to the deck. Not my favorite early game card, but it will do. Do we take a Dagger Spray here? We're at relatively low health going into... Act 1 hard pool fight, which we've seen does include many multi-enemy fights that are very scary. And Dagger Spray would help a lot in Gremlins or Slimes or Exordium Thugs. 
Doesn't do a whole lot against any single targets. Not that good against Hexaghost. For Hexaghost, we'd prefer Poison Stab or Blade Dance. But we have a couple hard pool fights. Three hard pool fights coming up. Hmm. I'm gonna take the dagger spray. We do get a two enemy fight. Not the uh, two enemy fight I had in mind, but it is a two enemy fight. We can just kill the slime here, right? This is good. It's a good turn one. Might be a clean fight here. Nice. But with Hole's Distraction prepared. I have no reason to click prepared. Well, it would be nine gold, I guess. I have no good reason to click prepared, as far as I can see. Dustbin Goblin, thanks for the hundred bits. I think you're playing too much Spire. You dreamt about it last night. That might be a sign, once you start dreaming of the game. Aaron W. says, I know Dagger Spray is underwhelming. Is having a potential Sentry's Encounter ahead enough reason to take it if you had just fought one of the other elites? Probably, yeah. If, if Sentries can be a tough matchup for uh, a character, any character who hasn't picked up AoE. So having, having one AoE card, even if it's bad, is often recommended. And hey, look at that. It does combo well with some relics, like Akabeko, which makes this Dagger Spray way more impactful. If we make it uh, do eight additional damage to all enemies twice, then it's starting to look a lot better. My question is, can I handle an elite on 19 health? What would I upgrade? Dagger Spray is a good upgrade. Neutralize is okay. Well, I like the Dagger Spray upgrade, actually. Feels like we're pretty good at Gremlin Knob. We're very good at Lagavulin because of Ice Cream. We're very good at Legavulin. I'm going to upgrade that Dagger Spray. Uh, we we are going to get a heal from uh, the shop, don't forget. So all we have to do is survive these two nodes. Then we get a 15 hit point heal. That's my hope that we can do that. We are facing Gremlin Bob. Who is going to regret showing up to work today. He's already at 30 health. Poor guy. Now he's already dead. All right, so the answer is yes. We could beat the elite on 19 health. We get a potion back. We get a bag of preparation, meaning we draw two more cards on turn one, meaning we have lots of options for what Akabeko hits. And we're being offered a footwork. There's also Blade Dance uh, finisher, but we're being offered a footwork. I like footwork. Footwork makes our blocks do more block. And gives me nine gold. I'll take it. What a nice floor. Oh, and what a nice floor this one is, too. Get him Akabeko. Get wrecked. Can maybe take Cloak and Dagger here with the footwork. Doesn't seem like there's any reason to, though. Realizing I haven't seen a terror card all week. Well, maybe today's the day. Maybe today is the day. Or maybe we just get Bag of Marbles from the shop. Then Dagger Spray does 21 damage twice. We've had first slice, yes, but what about second slice? It's not horrible. Doesn't feel very good. It's like adding another free strike. I think the one is fine. Okay, there's our nice heal. Second footwork. Riddle with Holes is here. Could take Toy Ornithopter for healing from potions. None of this really helps that much against Hexaghost, unfortunately. Hmm. Could take Piercing Whale and Slash or Dark Shackles for Hexaghost. I really like Dark Shackles for being free. Ah. 
It's only 20 gold for piercing well. That is cheap. I guess I'll add a piercing well. And I'll probably also add the dark shackles. But that would mean not getting toy ornithopter. Am I okay with that? I think so, since I've already got a healing relic. Are we okay to remove a strike going into Hexaghost? I'm not sure that we are. But I will. I'm not sure that I'm allowed to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right. Onwards. Show me a well-laid plans or a poison card, please. Please and thank you. Smoke Bomb, maybe that can save us from the boss. Technically, Crippling Cloud is a poison card. It's not a bad one, either. If we upgrade that, it is relatively powerful. But yeah, I think we're going to struggle to do enough damage to Hexaghost. Starting to regret not taking that poison stab we saw earlier. We at least have a good amount of health going into Hexaghost, and we can de almost definitely survive uh, Inferno, which gives me some hope. Your inclination was to grab that poison potion for Hexa help. If I'd known I was going to get Crippling Cloud, I would have picked it. We have to upgrade the cloud for 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. That's uh, 28 total damage for 2 energy. That's not terrible, but it's definitely not good enough. Hmm. Oh well. The only damage option, so we're going to take it. See how this goes. Still more than we have. Yeah, exactly. It's more than nothing. And we do get it on turn one. We do get it on turn one. So I'm not going to hesitate at all to use my potions here. Uh, let's get this footwork played, too. Shackles work here. The piercing whale. I'll float one energy for now. So we can play Predator every time. Take one to save an energy here. We can play a lot of offense next turn. Should be an off turn, so I can play all the strikes? Not quite. Two strikes. One defend. And we float that energy again. Maybe. We float it again. Continuing to make sure we can play Predator every time we see it. Here, for example, we can play the Predator and two defends, which is quite nice. We'll take four, but four is fine. And Inferno is next turn with a fresh draw pile. That kind of sucks. Wonder if I should Liquid Memories Predator now so we have more draw next turn. I was originally planning on using the Liquid Memories to get. Uh, Piercing Whale into my hand on the Inferno turn, but we can't do that if there's a fresh discard pile. So this seems like the time to Liquid Predator. Let's see what happens here. And then I'll definitely keep four energy into next turn. Let's see what happens. This is definitely spooky. We could absolutely die here. Looks like we don't. Not yet. Although we come pretty close. 5 HP, 34 health left on the boss. But work saving me, or are we dead here? 14 versus... Yeah, we're alive, we're alive. Ow. Piercing Whale saved me. 
Uh oh. No! <laughs> so close. So close. Alright, a good first attempt at getting past Hexagos. You can see where we're just a little shy on damage. Truly a single digit short of being able to get through this fight. So, yes, actually, uh, I'm going to blame this on not picking Poison Stab over Dagger Spray. A good reminder that you really do have to counterpick for the boss. Second best card is not good enough. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah, as 039 says, I'm always amazed at how much you need to over-prepare for the Act 1 boss. In this case, I wouldn't necessarily say over-prepare, but rather... You do need to solve it, right? Because it's, it's not that we didn't have the poison stab alongside our other poison stuff. It's just that it was the only poison we saw, so we had to take it. It's not like I skipped out on card rewards either, right? We saw a lot of cards. This shop being so garbage was really bad. <laughs> I do wonder if the poison potion could have maybe saved us. Would I have gotten past the hard pool fights if we hadn't taken Dagger Spray? Yes, but we, we never saw uh, any fight that was really scary in the hard pool. But it could have been that we did see a fight where we needed that. Okay. Let's go again, I suppose. So far, Silent Wind Streaking has been kind of demoralizing, but I think that's just the nature of shifting gears, right? We've been an ironclad mindset for quite a long time, so it's fairly natural to expect me to be rusty at Silent here. I think Silent is also a really challenging character in some ways. Okay, that's a nice start. Yeah, that's a nice start. What are our starting options? Remove max health. Curse for Max Health or Boss Swap. Probably I just take a remove. I'm down for one strike down to start. Let's let's lose a strike. I think this is a perfectly fine starting bonus for the silence. Although we are gonna need to replace that damage with something better. You might argue for remove defend on silent, I'd say not against Guardian, probably. either take two last turn or maybe take two this turn. I took the maybe take two this turn. That way there was a chance we got through without taking anything. I don't actually hate floor one deadly poison, but I really like floor one eviscerate, which does enormous damage for three energy. And gets cheaper with each card we discard. Does Silent have a general, quote, best archetype between Discard and Shivs? I don't know if I would say that she does. Kind of all up to what the game offers you synergies for and what the game gives you in terms of opponents for rewarding or punishing certain playstyles. All right, here we go. Something actually good to start out. Ghost in a Jar, giving us one turn of intangibility anytime we might need it, and a dagger throw to go with our Eviscerate. It's a good start to this run, thankfully. Perhaps the punishment is at an end? Perhaps. Get an early remove transform upgrade here. If I choose the upgrade, we're in much better shape for taking on the red elite here and getting three elites this act. Uh, I also don't dislike transforming at this time. Certainly could work out really well. All 
I would transform a strike, I believe. I think the starting of a discard package really makes us want to take removes and transforms. Let's transform. Let's see what we get here. We get a unload discard synergy online. Let's freaking go. It's actually a really good card this early. It does extremely powerful things. For example, discarding a Cinder's Bane so that, uh, uh, wait, hmm. I guess it does damage too. That part's nice. Take another dagger throw, and this eviscerate's gonna slap. Our first hard pool is not a hard fight. Two stinky fungi beasts who are not even attacking me on turn one. This is like the apology run from Spire. We just saw a bunch of pretty difficult starts to silent that we couldn't make work. Now we're having a really easy start, and this might be a much more straightforward run for us as a result. Oh my good lord. <laughs> you know what? Why the heck not? We've had first and second dagger throw, yes, but what about third dagger throw? Hopefully I'm not throwing this run with these picks. Eviscerate, where are you? I guess we can still use Unload to make it cheaper. Let's remove your artifact. Heck. My deck. Oh, but the redraw. Get in here, unload. Show them the power that you offer. Good work, unload. I even removed the artifact off the correct sentry, saving me two health here. Good for me. Alright, really good sentries fight. Didn't end up using either potion, only took about 10 damage. Get a dream catcher, rewarding us for resting, and a freaking phantasmal killer, which can double physical damage on the next turn. Oh my. That's an amazing way to scale all these attacks that we added. Give me that. Snacko Skull. Excuse me, this is not a poison deck. I'll take the blue key, I guess. <laughs> With these cards, there's no way I'm picking up poison. We have so many other better ways to do damage. Where was this last run? This would have killed Hexagos for us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's happening. It's not happening. Do I just wait a turn, or do I YOLO with the dagger throw? I guess this is a good turn next turn anyway. Damn it. Oh, draw orders. Oh, good. Okay, we're, we're fine. Perfect. And then we can Phantasmal Killer during the debuff turn. Sounds good to me. Just take 10, win this fight, keep the Ghost in a Jar. Let's do that. Hopefully we can kill next turn. Seems likely. Gotta be kidding me. <laughs> it's not likely. Come on. Hmm. 
think that was the only draw that didn't kill. All right, we're good. We're good. We still have uh, Ghost and Jar. We still have a decent amount of health. We can take second unload. How about a dash? Somewhat lower on block density now that we've added all this damage. Dash helps out a bit. Don't have any powers yet, right? That's right. Fighting Guardian too. That seems like a good idea. Take only discard cards or else. Spooky. But take only bananas. That makes the rest of this act feel a lot easier. Seems much more likely we get to keep this Ghost in a Jar to Act 4. Or whenever. How much damage can I deal? 14 plus 27 plus 10? Good lord. Get in there, unload. The Synergy! Very good fight. Could take another dash. Mario Kart build. I don't like it, actually. Prepared is also very reasonable with the uh, Eviscerate. Also very good against Grumlinob to have two dashes. Nice. That's not getting played, though. Come on, Eviscerate. Yeah, it finally lined up. Get wrecked. Obliterated. We get Sundial. Oh my, okay. We can go full discard monkey here. <laughs> and a fourth dagger spray, maybe? Or dagger throw? Sundial's kind of cool. I don't hate a Piercing Whale. Piercing Whale is a really nice block card for Act 2. It exhausts, which means it's not um, bad for Sundial decks, necessarily. It slows down the initial setup, but it's worth it, because it buys you time. Pretty good in the Guardian fight, too. Acrobatics looks really good. Hard Remove looks really good. How do we feel about Strange Spoon with the current deck? Mostly does nothing. Might save Piercing Whale. Oh. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Black Lab of the Cat. What do you call it when an intangible silent walks in to a tavern? A ghost in a bar. Definitely going to remove a strike here. I think I'm buying acrobatics. Wondering if we consider anything else here. Is it every backstab? I don't think so. Backstabs don't work with Phantasmal Killer, which makes them not that good. Backflip's okay. I don't feel like I need to pay for two common draw cards, though. Just one. I think we save up for relics in future acts now. How's it going, Steelhead? Just gotten started with our silent streaking attempts. So far, I wouldn't say things are going exceptionally well. Still getting our sea legs, so to speak.
I think I want to transform right now. I could play unload, then eviscerate. I think I'm just going to play the eviscerate, though. Skip the unload. That way we don't transform now, which means we delay the defensive mode by one turn. Because um, I don't want to draw this during the six, the 8x2 turn. If we draw this hand next turn, and we've already transformed on the turn 1, then we're getting bodied next turn. So we're trying to prevent that here. take a little bit. And this turn might be a bit awkward, too. That worked out okay, though. Yeah, we can defend Survivor, which we wouldn't have been able to do. Replace Phantasmal as well. Hello, Jurio Xeo. Just beat A20 with Clad after 100 hours. My videos have been priceless. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for dropping by. These dashes are quite nice, allowing us to chip away at Guardian's health pool during the curl up turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, six. Six hits out of 14 draw. Not sure it's worth playing Dagger Throw here. Maybe we just take our hit. Take the hit there. I would have drawn Piercing Well, though. Though I should have played it. Oh well, we keep Piercing Well now. And then next turn, Bonketing occurs, but does it really? Does it really? Take four and kill right now with Eviscerate, or we can double def triple defend and keep the fight going for a bit longer. Probably take less than four. I think it's unlikely we take less than four. Let's just end this fight. Get out of here with 28 health. Alchemize and after image. Kind of cool. I guess a thousand cuts is also here. But yeah, it's going to be one of the... Uh, all of these cards start with A. Mysterious. We don't get a whole lot of block from after image, but we do get two health every fight. I think the Alchemize is probably better, generating a random potion each combat. Although, since we already have the Ghost in a Jar, I am really inclined to try to hold on to that for a long time. Which makes the Alchemize a bit worse. Maybe I should take After Image then. Between the Ghost in a Jar and the Bird Face turn, we're pushed away from Alchemize and towards After Image here. And if we keep taking draw discard stuff, and if we try to use the Sundial, then the After Image gets better and better. Let's take After Image. I want that heal too. P Master says, how do I get all of these statistics? If you're talking about the stuff the bot puts out, the bot uh, is magic, basically. Bot aggregates all of my play data and is able to answer questions based on the current game state or our past win rates based on that. Coding. So we got two energy options here. Philosopher's Stone and Runic Dome. Runic Dome's kind of spooky. I think I'd rather take Philo Stone. We get tougher enemies, but at least we can see who to focus and when to play Piercing Whale. Silent, in general, has a lot of strength down effects and weaken effects that make Philo Stone less scary for her. I'm not in the mood to play Runic Dome. I'm gonna be honest. 
super not in the mood for Runic Dome right now. And it makes it hard to know when to use Ghost in a Jar, too. So I'm thinking Philo Stone. There's also Tiny House. We get a bit of money, a bit of max health, a random upgrade. That's not going to be good enough. Let's take energy here in the form of Philosopher's Stone. All enemies gain additional strength. But we gain additional energy. And... This act is super deadly looking. Enemies up front and center. There's only one path that doesn't involve an early elite here. Which is definitely on the scary side. How do we feel about combats? With Philo Stone, they're a little spooky. Why don't we just poke our head in this shop? Sounds good. First, we have to get past the two thieves. Though who are jerks. I've often said this fight is really nasty at times. A lot easier if you're willing to use a potion. Which we are here. This burst is interesting. If I burst acrobatics, looking for eviscerate or piercing whale or something. Let's try that. Piercing whale. No eviscerate, sadly. Or is there? Ah. Good work. Stop this nerd from getting away. My money. All right, enjoy your money, sir. One short. That's tough. The fake Pablo, thanks for the 1.2 metric years of support. The knowing skill is here, though. What is it you seek? What is it you offer? We can lose health to gain money repeatedly here. And if we rest, we get a card reward, which is kind of cool. Give me your money, sir. Oh, boy. Behind you, mortal. Uh-oh. Mistakes were made. I repeat, mistakes have been made. It's them, the angry birds. Oh, what a garbage hand this is, too. Yikes. Actually, wait, is it yikes? Well, I'm going to take 12. I guess that's not too bad. Actually, no, this won't kill, huh? Garbage. It's only 27. Bummer. Go to very low health then. Spooky. Let's just do Dash Survivor. We need to overthink this. Okay, that was a little scary. We've had first Eviscerate, yes, but what about second Eviscerate? I think that's very good with all the draw and discard in this deck. Question is, can we get through this fight where they're attacking on turn one without using the Ghost in a Jar? Preferably. Preferably without using Ghost in a Jar.
Uh, if I dagger throw, I can double eviscerate. So we can actually kill Mystic turn one here. Is that correct? Because this is 27 plus 21. 48 plus 9. 57 damage. Yeah, we can kill the Mystic on turn one here. Let's do that. That saves me a lot of health. And then the Mystic is gone. How's it going? Carl Sagan, 42. Uh, very addicted to Spire. You're not alone. It's a very addicting game. And a very replayable game. I'd call this the most replayable game I've ever played, personally. With now over 7,000 hours logged in Slay the Spire. Just ludicrous to me. Just ludicrous. This is a really cool example of uh, killing the Mystic first in this fight. Making it work out. Even though it took us a long time to follow up and kill the Centurion. Because our draws were garbage. <laughs> Hello. Great fight. We even healed for two off the bird face turn. Where were you last run? I'll take a second Acrobatics. More draw, more discard. Is it replayable even when it's being mean to you? It is. Shockingly, it is. Oh man, what a shop. I regret that I can only afford two relics here. Surely one of them has to be Frozen Eye. Knowing the exact order of the draw pile, where the Piercing Whale is, what the acrobatics will draw to, what we can get Eviscerate to cost, what Phantasmal Killer is going to do. These are all vitally important things to know. I would say, in general, this relic gets stronger the more draw your deck has. And this deck, well, it has a lot of draw. So that's vitally important. I think I like the plus strength, although the plus energy is also pretty good. I definitely want to buy Well-Laid Plans, allowing us to retain a card each turn. It also heals us for two when we play it. Instead of buying Vajra, I could remove a card, but I think that plus strength for bonus damage is going to go a really long way here. So I prefer not to. Let's take the plus strength. Oh yeah, and let's take the block potion, right? Yeah, let's take the block potion. To help me avoid death. That said, we are going to this rest site and resting. We get a card reward for doing so. Bring us infinite blades, sneaky strike, deadly poison. That's a consistently free Sneaky Strike, but I don't think we need it with the other stuff that we have. So, what am I drawing next turn with Phantasmal Killer? Um, Acro into Acro into Dagger Throw, Double Eviscerate with Double Damage is what we're drawing. Seems good. Seems really, really, really good. How much damage is that? I can do some math here. Eviscerate plus is 60 damage, 20 damage three times. This one is eight damage. There are 16 damage three times, 54. So just Eviscerate, Eviscerate kills Chosen, which means we put all the other damage onto Cultist, I suppose. That's pretty cool. Already feeling good about the Vajra purchase. Don't forget to play the well-laid plans for two hit points. Or the after image. I can't play both though. Great fight. We've had first and second acrobatics, yes, but what about third acrobatics? I want upgraded ones, not unupgraded ones. I also want tacticians and or reflexes. Let's fight in the lead. 
Is there a command to see all my mods? Yeah, we've even got a page now on the website that lists all of my uh, mods. I'll also mouse over briefly for the full listing here so you can see the in-game list of installed mods. Mostly informational mods. I don't use any mods that alter gameplay beyond RNG fix, which just prevents me from using cheese, basically. Otherwise, the gameplay you see is going to be identical to vanilla Spire gameplay, and all of the, the tactics and strategies that I use will absolutely apply as well. So, with Phantasmal Killer in hand right now, what we want to do is get this Eviscerate to be played next turn. That is the current goal. So currently, I'm going to draw these five. I can play Acro, draw one, two, three. We can do Dagger Throw, Dagger Throw, get the Eviscerate for free. I have one energy left to play well Aid Plans or Piercing Whale. Probably Piercing Whale sounds good. And then I just draw a Bupkiss. Then I just draw a Bupkiss. That's kind of bad. Hmm. This is only 60 damage we've established. Maybe I'll use the Block Potion. We'll play well Aid Plans and I'll retain something. Other option. Play Acro now. Well, one, two, three. Next turn. One, two, three, four, five. Acro draws one, two, three. Dagger throw, dagger throw. I can't get both eviscerates. So I don't think I played the acrobatics. We're gonna go survivor. Defend unload or strike unload? This is where I really ought to do math. Go defend unload. Take no damage. That means we get no wounds. Down to 47 is pretty good. It plans heals two. I get to hold Piercing Whale, but is Piercing Whale any good when we're not getting multi-hit next turn? It's not. I think that's what I choose to do. And I think I have to play the Eviscerate, because we're looking for a kill next turn. Let's take a little bit of a hit here. Not enough, huh? We have... Oh, no, it is enough, because of Vajra. Only because of Vajra. Otherwise, this would be 22. Thank you, Vajra. Good work. Really like a smiling mask. Can I give you an advice on Against the Storm? What to do in the beginning of each game and how to choose blueprints. So year one is usually about getting up housing, getting up a couple woodcutters camps, and cutting into one or maybe two glades. Usually recommend going for dangerous glades towards the end of year one rather than opening small glades. Too many small glades can be a bad thing. Year two, I am trying to get up some buildings your early blueprint should be centered around getting buildings that can produce other building materials. So you want planks, bricks, fabric, uh, or you want complex foods that you can make with the ingredients you have. So if you have meat, you want to go for a building that says skewers or uh, jerky. And if you don't, you might want to pick up farm or a flower producing building. Yeah, early complex food is quite good with uh, skewers and pickled goods and porridge being some of the best because they're the easiest to make. You're going to need the 
complex food to keep your people happy enough to avoid having them leave during the storms of years two and three, usually. How's it going fast, ass panda? I think we go for another elite here. We defeated the one elite, no problem. We still have Ghost in a Jar, which is a good reason to keep fighting elites, in my opinion. And I like this late shop with a card remove. Also go here, but there's no reason to. Yeah, let's take this elite on. Let's do it. We also have Ginger, meaning we cannot be weakened, which actually could apply here with Fat Gremlin. Uh-oh. No. Hmm. Bummer. Bye, Ghosty. Well... Yeah, when it comes to pickled goods, um, getting containers can be hard early on, but you can purchase some from the merchant or oftentimes find them in Glade Rewards or caches. You'll get like 30 or 40, and that can last for a long time. You can make a lot of pickled goods out of 40 containers. Why is it like that? How's it going, Dark Lord of Gulp? Why is Spire so replayable? I think in one word, polish. Spire is, and in a second word, balance. Spire is both polished and balanced in a way that makes it kind of endlessly entertaining to come back to. Because it's so hard to nail down definitive answers to really any question about what to do in this game. Because the random elements can combine and recombine in so many different ways. Quite a time. So I'm trying to figure out what to do here. Our opening hand does not let us dispatch these gremlins easily, which is really problematic. I can only kill one of them if I play both dashes. If I don't play both dashes, then we are getting attacked by the gremlin leader next turn. Which is not the worst thing if we get piercing whale. So we could, for example, play acrobatics... Well-laid plans. Dash. I think that would mean skipping after image here. We would actually take a little bit. Both gremlins would attack for 17. I hate that. I really hate that. I might just play dash, dash, but then I'm not drawing piercing well, right? It's a miserable turn if I don't play acrobatics next turn. Although we could just use the Ghost in a Jar if we do get attacked. Maybe that's what we do. We play Double Dash this turn. Next turn, if Leader attacks us, just use Ghost in a Jar. Just whatever the heck. Oh, this turn's also bad if I don't play Acro. I think I have to play Acro. On review, I think I need to play Acrobatics here. Thankfully, we're immune to Weaken. That means I might commit to using Ghost. Playing Dash is not recommended, right? And then we actually want to hold Phantasmal Killer for next turn. A dex potion also. Okay, let's try this. Is it even worth trying to piercing whale? I don't think it is. I think we just use that. 
That's what it's for, after all. He eviscerates. Actually, upon review, maybe I was meant to ignore the Sneaky Gremlin entirely, just focus on leader. I think we do just kill leader now. With his hands. Just instantly win. Oh. Get a frozen egg for our trouble, meaning all powers are upgraded. It's kind of cool going into a shop at least. And another acrobatics that I don't really want. Yeah, Phantasmal Killer does some, some really good work. But we no longer have our ghost in a jar, which makes our upcoming boss, the Bronze Automaton, a lot scarier. So we do have to worry about that. Quite a bit. We have to worry about that. When is Riddle with Holes good? I don't think it is. <laughs> it's okay with Envenom. It's okay with Akabeko. If you can somehow get a lot of strength, it's kind of okay. But mostly it just isn't good. Big ouchie here, unfortunately. I've got some healing. Alchemize. I'll be taking that. Could definitely use some better potions for the boss fight. Hmm. That dagger throws too. Dagger throw? No, this is just garbage. Damn it. Hmm. Pretty bad. We'll use the attack potion. Actually, way better than I thought. Oh boy. It's 48. Hmm, okay. It's not so bad. not so bad at all. Can I do enough damage, though, is the question. Hmm. This turn is not so good. Unload only discards one. Can't unload and survivor to discard. These are two cost at best. I think that means this has to be something like survivor dash unload. Keep one eviscerate for next turn. Thanks, I hate it. I feel like we're gonna die? We might die. Or might have to use the ghost to avoid dying. Promising. All is well. Cool. 
ghosts. Okay. Okay, we're fine. Keep the ghosts. We get to rest. Maybe should have set up a uh, sundial a bit more. Backflip looks quite good here. It says card draw on it. And it blocks so that we don't have dexterity. It's good enough. Why does the game have sound if it's a silent streak? Asking the important questions. Oh, there's the footwork with a plus on it. Did we just get saved by Dreamcatcher? Maybe. Cool. And this oh. Venom has a plus. Ooh, tactician's here, though. Tactician might be a pretty good upgrade, actually. With all that the deck has. That's a really good Tactician upgrade. Of course, if I buy Tactician, I can't remove a card. I do kind of like removing a card. But what about a dagger throw? Indeed. I'm going to remove a strike. I think these are terrible cards. Ah. And we can upgrade something else. Well-aid plans or alchemize. I really like upgrading well-aid plans. Upgrade well-aid plans. Indeed, waffle would have been nice. Actually, fairly hopeful about this fight. We have Ghost in a Jar to block Hyper Beam. We have enough health to survive otherwise. We got our defensive powers on turn one. That's a pretty good start. Don't forget, we heal two per power. So we're now healing six per fight with three powers. Uh, I could Swift Potion now. Get Alchemize. You know what? I will. Will. I have Phantasmal next turn, so Acro into Eviscerate sounds really good, actually. Don't play Dagger Throw. Now we unload? We're gonna unload. Specifically. Okay, next turn we can do another free eviscerate. Blocking seems good too, though. Concerning. Also need to deal damage. Lots of damage. I've got this ghost. I'm going to use it. Also going to not play a dagger throw here because I want the energy next turn, not now. Thanks to Sundial. 59. So we can block 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. When actually, 9 times 5 is 45. Actually, we can survive this without the ghost. In which case, maybe I want to. Maybe I will. I think that is enough. Yeah, we go to one. We go to one. I 
Thank you. Points are overrated. Yeah, we're good. Ow. But my face, though. My face, though. Yes, it will. Let's just use it, though. Survivor PK. Should be able to block this without... Help. Because it's only... Only 30 damage. That's easy. That's easy peasy. Okay, I keep this and I guess this too, sure. Come with me to the end of the game, Ghost in a Jar. If only we hadn't skipped the... <laughs> If only I didn't skip the Snacko Skull. This actually would be a good Invenom. I'm such a fool for passing that up. It's not just an Invenom, but it's an Invenom Plus that heals for two. I think I skip it, though. Could take Burst here, Burst Backflip, Burst Acrobatics, Burst Phantasmal Killer. They're all actually not bad. That is a pretty good upgrade on that Burst. No, I do like this Burst. Take burst. And how about a hovering kite for more energy? The first time we discard a card each turn. Seems very likely. But also take fusion hammer or Pandora's box. Kite just seems free though, right? Get energy almost every turn with no downside. Yoink. Big yoink. Oh, oh my, oh my, okay. Where's the Burning Elite, though? No, okay. You get one, though. Get one shop. One shop's fine. I was really hoping for double remove with Smiling Mask there, but... Not to be with the position of the Burning Elite. We have to go that way. Pretty scary path overall, but uh, I'm not, a, not that scared. We've got lots of healing from Birdface Urn coming our way. And we have a ghost in jar, of course. Can't forget the ghost. Too spooky. Did I hear this? Is he did I hear about the sequel to <laughs> Spire in the Works? Just saw the trailer for Slay the Spire three. Says him Pooley, and then I'm uh, sorry for this joke. They also say. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to Spire 2. I'm impressed that, that uh, Megacrit chose to try to follow up to Spire immediately, but I'm really hopeful for whatever they've got planned. I'll use the attack potion now. Played AI first, probably. 
Am I playing after image though? I don't think I am. Not yet. Let's just double dash then. Concerning. We have double damage this turn. Let's do the following then. to deal five damage back. I like that as a supplementary damage source for the end game here. The heart in particular is really vulnerable to Caltrops and it works pretty well on some of the end game bosses as well. And it heals us for two. So I'm gonna grab that. Your potion's really strong. Chemical X. If only I had X Goss guards. Do I think they'll change the generation mechanics in an RNG fix short, short sort of way? I hope that the devs will learn lessons about the potential pitfalls of correlated RNG um, or otherwise potential problems with how things are randomly generated. They already saw showed a lot of foresight in Spire 1 by having sort of auto-adjusting numbers, like how your potion chance changes based on whether you do or don't find a potion. Buying this escape plan, by the way. It's very good with Frozen Eye. But yeah, we're mostly here to remove a card. <clears throat> Onwards and upwards. Ever take Omomori for 999 gold there? I don't think so, no. Very unlikely that we run into a chance to get it. Played after image first. Like that on my part. Back to the spikers. Not having willy plans, kind of bad for this. Oh well. It's not even a kill, huh? Hmm. Got frozen eye though. I think we'll be fine. Oh, will we though? Hmm. Yeah, I did that to myself by not playing the Willy plans. Gonna pay the life up front. Yerks. down. We really lost a lot of health, so it's not actually a net gain. My bad.
The shreds, you say? Finally, a terror. And it's an upgraded terror, no less. Get in here. Terror applies 99 turns of vulnerable to one enemy. Which is real good like. Real good like. I'm just going to burst PK here. So my attacks do triple damage now. Which is a big number. Actually been able to kill with a slightly different order. Oh well, we can kill next turn by playing more power, so it's even better to kill next turn. Guess I'll make a new potion too. Don't have a lot of weaken in the deck. Leg sweep helps out with that. Got lots of energy to use it, too. Good with our dexterity. Unfortunately, we have to fight Raptomancer, which is very spooky here. Hmm, Raptomancer, huh? Tough. turn's really bad, too. Looks like I'll probably have to use the Sneka Oil or something. Uh, let's keep that leg sweep. Go like this. Not getting attacked by Repto is definitely helpful. The rest of the turn, not so much. Alright, Sneka Oil, save me. Draw five cards and randomize their cost. Alright, we got a zero cost survivor, a one cost eviscerate. That's good. Phantasmal Killer coming up next turn. We want to retain it because I have no damage next turn. Although if I play Unload, it gets discarded, so I guess I have to play it. You can burst it. Bursting it looks good. It means no Caltrops, which I'm okay with. May find ourselves forced to Ghost in a Jar on one of these turns. Like this turn. Yeah, probably like this turn. This is really, really bad. All right, fine. So many wounds being added to. Damage. Miserable. 
Oh well, we just block one, kill the other, it's fine. Eat piercing whale leg sweep. I haven't hurt Repto at all yet, which is very scary. Not a good indication that the fight is going well. Garbage. Very much garbage. And two more wounds? I'm definitely concerned here. Just not able to get enough stuff done. Very spooky. Although this is a great turn for damage. Never mind, I guess I can't complain too much. From spooky to winning. Now we have ice cream. Ice cream's cool. A second after image. I'm down for. Heals us for two after all. Although the awakened one does loom in the distance, being a little spooky here. I'll still take it. Get a glowing tesseract, which we can look at for some colorless cards, some of which are really good. Purity could be interesting. Dark Shackles and Flash of Steel are pretty good. Master of Strategy and Finesse are very good. Really like Master of Strats, although Finesse is very nice with af two after images and a footwork. I think I'll actually take the Finesse here. Kid Charlemagne, thanks for the 21 months of support. Take a Dark Shackles. Do I want Purity? Let's skip this one. Are the rarities randomized in this event? It's a bit weird with the rarities for this one because there are no common colorless cards. So you only get uncommons or rares, which means the game has to use a special rarity calculation. All right, I'll lose one of our two eviscerates. I'm okay with that, I think. Cool. What's my criteria for taking purity? Seems like it's several removes in one fight. Yeah, but only the second time you would draw those cards, right? So you have to draw through the deck quite a few times, usually, for that to be any good at all. Yeah, not often worth it unless it enables some kind of infinite. I, I do agree with that. That was a decent damage turn. Next turn we can burst Phantasmal. I like that. Although maybe I want to burst Leg Sweep. No. Cool. This right's on the bottom, of course it is. We can't move through though. Why are you still here? Realistically, I have to burst acrobatics then, which I'm cool with. I'll be doing that. Shuffle it back into the draw pile. Goes back down towards the bottom. 
Definitely see why I had two of that card previously. Hurting a little bit for damage now that we only have one. Only a bit though, as you can see. Giant head was no problem. Die from poison, sir. Get a shuriken. For playing three attacks in one turn, we gain strength. With two after images, that does kind of make Blade Dance rather decent, actually. Sure. But only because I have two after image. is kind of yikes at the moment. The two repulsors. Dr. Mr. Punny, thank you so much for the very generous 15 hundo bits. Dr. Punny says, I played Slay the Spire a bit in the past, but never got past Ascension 1. With a newborn in the house, I discovered your videos, and they've been helping you get through the midnight feedings, and you've even climbed all the way to A7 with everyone. Well done. Hope all is well for you and the little one. Jupiter Reform, thanks for the Prime sub. And Maximost, thanks for the Prime sub as well. How do Tungsten Rod and Tori interact? Um, Tori is first. So six damage becomes five damage. Five damage becomes zero damage. Pretty cool. All right, one Repulsor, because Lord, there's still a lot of garbage in the draw pile. Kill the other one. Terrible. Well, I've got an Alchemize. We can just use the Gambler's Broom. 20 energy, by the way, because <laughs> of ice cream. That's great. back. Would outmaneuver be good here? I don't actually think so. I don't think we can spend all the energy that it would make. We want Acro to be upgraded. I guess Expertise is maybe okay card draw, but I'm not convinced. Keep skipping here. I don't want too many powers for the Awakened One. Somebody asked me, do I want bandage up earlier in the act? And I said no, and you can see why here. We're at full health, even without the bandage up. So there was absolutely no need for it. Can't be any more health than full, after all. Silver U, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club.
This is a really good Distilled Chaos moment. This is a really good Distilled Chaos moment. Get a white bee statue, guaranteeing a potion after every combat. Mostly helps us by giving us a potion after the elites in Act 4. Horps Explosion is here. Outmaneuver is here. Backflip Plus is here. I gotta say, I think I like the Backflip Plus the most of all the options, but Horps Explosion is a little tempting. We still do enough damage is the real question. Sometimes yes, sometimes not so much. Got a block, 19 plus 12. Played after image earlier in this turn. This is still fine, actually. Close enough. one for Awakened One. Actually, that's going to help a lot against Awakened One. I've been offered so many unupgraded acrobatics this run. Am I willing to take one? I think I am just upgrading one of our acros as it is. Although upgrading the leg sweep is a little bit tempting too, since our weaken is not that good. We have neutralized leg sweep, that's it. Upgrading leg sweep is a good idea. Yeah, I'll upgrade leg sweep. Take a second blade dance for more damage. I don't feel like I need it though. I think we're good. Oh yeah, we should upgrade burst. Probably the next upgrade is burst. Good call indeed. I guess I'll just use this now. Don't play Keltrops in this fight. Don't play Keltrops in this fight. Only makes the bird angrier. I think we want to limit ourselves to powers that help us block. Anything else will not really be a good idea. Uh, let's burst backflip. Piercing Whale is going to save our butt next turn. Uh, 
kill these birds too. That's my double damage turn. Pathetic. Pathetic, I say. This will probably be the hardest boss of the three. Once the minions are gone, this should get a little bit easier. Ah, uh, Sundial. There we go. Got a block 12 by 4. Easy, right? I'm the Rhinestone Cowboy, thanks for the Prime sub. It's like a year, but frail. Thanks for nine months. The frail year. Uh, and this actually full blocks to play Caltrops. Seems good. Two damage shivs. Seem like they're all right. Mostly this is credit to the uh, Pulsus Potion. But I'll take the W. All right, our first boss is down. The second one is Donu Deka. These shoot two should be a bit easier, I'm thinking. Could be, mind you. Doesn't always mean is. So we want to make Donu vulnerable. I think we'll use the weak pot to achieve that. Next turn I can do Dark Shackles and then Terror. Just use that now. Thinking too hard about ice cream for the most part. It does have its uses, but not yet. Okay, Phantasmal for next turn sounds good. Survivor Eviscerae, just bank energy.
Boom. A little tricky. Cool. We do this at full health, maybe, or close to full health? That'd be really appreciated. How do you deal with time meter is silent? Powers is probably the easiest answer. The more powers you can stack, the better your odds are. One, two. I don't get the abyss right here. I think it's burst survivor then. I only take one. Or no, that's more than one. Slightly more than one. We should have an easy fight from here with uh, Donnie down. Should be no problem. Kill on this turn. So I'd like to do it without resetting the sundial here. Yes. Cool. All right, GG. We beat Donu and Deka. We have two potions. We have almost all of our health. Now we can upgrade Burst. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Deal 2054 damage. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this discard? Hey there, Cure More. Have I ever played Darkest Dungeon? Both one and two. I liked Darkest Dungeon one a little bit more. Although I found that it was often kind of grindy in ways I didn't enjoy. Darkest Dungeon two, I couldn't find any fun in. Really bounced off that one. Ooh, Art of War. Stressful is, is definitely the sort of the theme that Darkest Dungeon is going for, so 
I don't really blame it for being stressful. But you need to pair the stress with relief and accomplishment. And I feel like DD2 forgot to add those parts. Maybe we remove one defend here. Grand Finale has potential here? A little bit. I don't think I need that much more damage, though. I'm liking Art of War card remove quite a lot. Art of War with the ice cream and the frozen eye is real juicy-like. All right, I'm not completely confident in our end game here, but we'll see what we can do. Going to do our best, dang it. So far looks pretty terrible. Let's see a couple things we can do. I think this gets played. This gets played. Next turn I can burst piercing whale. We want to do this. We get Art of War energy. And next turn, we also get more Art of War energy. We do take some damage. That's okay. Yeah. Game about our double damage turn there. Oh yeah, and then this turn is miserable. Oh boy. That's sufficiently bad that I want a liquid memory is not really. Not really. It's pretty bad, right? It's pretty bad. Bummer. All right, fine. Just give me a uh, backflip. Try to burst this for two potions. Right now we have more pressing issues though. Finley, what am I gonna do on this turn to not die? Oh, that looks promising. Oh yes, that looks very promising. Use the fire potion in this fight. We're good. Sir, when is our damage turn? It's here. It's here. It's now. Fear not, it finally arrived. Let's see, this is 27 three times. We do one dagger throw here. And then another dagger throw here. There's our damage turn. All is well. Fear not. Thank you. 
Yeah, pretty good fight overall. We're only missing a few health. We can set up our sundial. That would be recommended. We can do that right away, in fact. No reason to use the fire potion. Oh, we get Ghost in a Jar and Bronze Scales. I can't imagine a better set of rewards for making sure the heart is manageable here. Oh, maybe I can. How about an also one more Caltrops? Ultimate Spike Spilled. Go. The heart prep is super real here. Amazing finds. Absolutely amazing finds. I think we're in great shape then. With this many thorns, we shouldn't have to do much other than survive for a few turns. This is an okay forge pot, given that I have alchemize in hand. Take a throw, draws, and discards dash, which is fine. Next turn looks really good. We have leg sweep coming up, we have footwork coming up. Yeah. Let's use forge pot for the week next turn, guaranteed. Uh, and I guess I lead defend, defend, after image, phantasmal, alchemize, neutralize. Ooh, that's good. Might as well use that now. No reason not to, right? No reason not to. And then we don't bother playing dash, right? Take four energy into next turn. Remember, this is a Philosopher's Stone boosted heart. Though it's a little spooky. Looks like escape plan's not going to work. Next turn looks tough, actually. I'd prefer to keep the ghost in a jar. Yeah. I'll take some damage here. That's fine. Take 30. Go to 33. And then next turn we can play Piercing Well. But yeah, these multi attacks are deadlier than normal, which is very important to keep in mind. Hold on to burst. What are we using burst on? I guess I don't have a reason to hold on to burst yet. Burst on blade dance, maybe. I'm not taking much of damage. Burst this finesse if I want to. That doesn't seem helpful. I guess it's better than bursting my other options, so you know what? Screw it. No need to burst terror, right? And now, Blade Dance for the damage. One. Heart takes 8 by 15. I don't even have the second Keltrops in play. It's 120 damage returned. First coming up. Burst is good. Guess I'll play this dash for some damage. Doesn't feel really worth it. Just keep the energy. 
Okay, I thought this turn might happen. We have a couple answers, though. I can actually just burst my block cards. Block 45 the hard way? That sounds easy, actually. It's easy to do things the hard way. Obviously. Damage turn next turn. We'll just keep Eviscerate Leg Sweep. Don't want to play Dark Shackles yet. Weaken's about to wear off. Don't play the Dark Shackles. We lose the Weaken. Ooh. I have Ghost, though. All right, let's just do this. Keep Leg Sweep Eviscerate. All that damage, though. 195. Oh, wait. No, this is a terrible damage turn. What am I talking about? Do five damage. Good for me. Good for me. Oops. And I redrew the neutralize, so I didn't even need to, didn't even need to waste my uh, thing. Oh, well. Whoopsie-doo. Good. Take 13 damage. Ha! You fool. Below 200 if we can. Alright, feels pretty safe now. Very, very hard to die from here. Looking very good. Yeah. Take 13 thorns damage. GG. Mr. Hart, we are the spiker. GG. That was a tough run, but uh, well fought. And a glorious victory for the silent. GG. GG. One down, 19 more to go. Easy peasy. Do you feel good about the Philosopher's Stone that we picked up? I think that worked out really well. Hovering Kite was three quarters of an energy relic. That's pretty dang good. Be free, my ghost friend. Be free, you. Yeah, what has it been done? The spikes sleep, and so uh, shall I. This one came together really last minute. I'd say this had some of the bare minimum required for Silent to get a winning run, which is one well-laid plans, one footwork, just enough weaken, one or two piercing whales. Kind of the bare minimum survive the endgame package for Silence, and we had it. Well, after images didn't hurt either. We decided it was time for a change, Zorak. Our best Ironclad streak was 11. I do plan on coming back to Ironclad when streaking. But it, uh, given the current challenge, it may well take more than a year of trying to get uh, 20 streak with each of the four characters. I think we'll probably have some time towards the end of the year to come back to Clad and revisit. What kind of new relics am I hoping for in Spire 2? I wonder if we'll see any um, active relics, that is, relics where you have to provide an input or click on them to, to get them to do something. I think that'd be kind of cool. I think what I'd like to see less of are relics that just try to make more relics for you. So less things like Tiny Chest and Matrushka. Although Black Star is pretty cool. Black Star can stay. 
Less things like shovel. I'd like to see curses play more of a role in Spire 2. Spire 1 has some really interesting design with the give and take of curse cards, get a bonus but also a penalty at the same time. But the player is not consistently offered curses or curse opportunities, and I'd like to see that change in Spire 2. I'd like to see curses take more of a common role on runs so that curse interacting relics have more purpose. Maybe something like the Devil Deals of Binding of Isaac. Beat a boss, you get your boss reward, but then also you can take curses to get additional rewards after the boss, like also pay one or two curses to get a rare relic or something. A way to get curses in shops would be interesting, too. Although, like I said, I like the idea of a, a special shop where you pay in curses. Am I still planning to do this week's Seed of the Week at some point? Let's see. Today would be my last day to do it if we're going to stream it. It is a silent seed. I guess I'll do that next. Why not? We'll do uh, Seed of the Week. Up next, let me see here. So the Seed of the Week is a collaborative spire slaying effort created by Asuki here. Current seed, trans rights for the silent. That's excellent. Here, we'll just swap to our non-main profile here. Heck yeah, trans rights. But before we jump into this run, we are going to take a quick break here. Twitch chat, we're over two hours into the broadcast. So, I'm going to refill the legs, stretch the water back in a few. Upon my return, we embark on our trans rights journey here as the silent. Be right back, everybody. <laughs> 